Hey there. Welcome back to the big board. Let's have a talk about Six Days of Glory. This is uh, published by Cla Clash of Arms in, I think, in 97, 1997. So it's an older game, and in fact, it's one of the first games in the series of uh, what eventually would become the, the higher level games that are not the Napoleonic Library of Battles series. Uh, more operationally oriented in terms of its its scale and, and things like that. Uh, so, you know, every hex here is 1,500 meters or 1,700 yards thereabouts. And there are other games in these series that are, that uh, you know, eventually end up at one mile or multiple miles per hex. <clears throat> and I always get the numbers mixed up, whether it's days one, days two, days five, whatever the case may be. And I think this was the very first of the Days series, even though it wasn't called the Days series. In fact, there you go, 1997. Uh, you probably can't read that, but that's when it was first made. Uh, but it's the first module in this new system. So, got some warts? Pretty much. Uh, it. I don't know where, you know, a lot of uh, the Zaka games kind of migrated from, uh, you know, his time at SBI and... All the rest of it, uh, this is a noble effort, right? Uh, we've got to put it all in context for the time and all the rest of it. It's trying to put you in that decision space where you're making choices about more about maneuver uh, than you are about tactical battles uh, because you're fighting over 1,700 yard hexes and the you know classic old CRT goes up to four to one, goes down to one to three or one to whatever it is. Uh, I don't even know what it is uh, anymore. Uh, yeah, one to four. You know, on a, on a four to one, every, everybody dies. Uh, uh, there's an exchange result. There's a DR2 and then there's three uh, DEs uh, eliminates, right? So it's pretty, pretty hardcore basic. Uh, good news is that there's an opportunity for units to come back in this uh, reorganization uh, phase that happens in the night turns. Turns are split up between a.m., p.m., and night. <clears throat> so I've played a handful of these. Uh, there's revised rules out that kind of freshen all this up, and you go get the um, 1809 version of this scale, and you use those rules, and it'll all play pretty well. Now, what, what's good about this game is it does, I think, put you in that decision space of making choices as Napoleon may have uh, dashing letters off to direct Ney and uh, his other commanders to, you know, go do A, B, or C. And uh, your opponent's going to react to that. And uh, he's, yeah, Napoleon's going to react to him. <clears throat> you, you've got these hidden movement markers on the on the units potentially obviously i didn't play with them that way and so it's got lots of potential for a two-player game uh, if you do wish to merely run through this and see what happened historically it works great uh although i did find it very difficult to do, uh, you know, to keep it historically uh, on the historical rails, uh, which I think is a good thing, by the way. Uh, uh, Napoleon had a very easy time of it uh, by smashing through this area here, consolidating a lot of his forces here, and then uh, basically blocking supply with some uh, vedettes and cavalry units. Uh, back uh, to the supply depots, um, which affects, uh, basically makes everybody demoralized, which is not a big deal. Uh, you get a plus one on uh, some activation rolls. There's no advance after combat. There's no force marching and stuff like that. But in a small area like this, that's not going to matter terribly much. The activation side of it did did make a difference. But what it did do is it, it prevented the... Uh, the Prussians and the Russians from exiting the map. It's this kind of funky situation with this game, which if you look at the original video I posted up about the VCs, where basically you're coming, uh, your one force is coming onto the map, a Russian force is leaving the map, the French are coming up over here, 
I mean, there are other Prussians coming on here. And obviously, they're, 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 they're kind of sort of trying to get Napoleon, but these guys are going that way. And Napoleon starts racing after these dudes, gets into a fight over here, and all sorts of stuff comes goes on. And Napoleon kind of has a good day, basically, or a good couple of days. Uh, but it's not the decisive battle that he was looking for. I found that it was easy enough to uh, pick at uh, the Russians a little bit, uh, delay these guys here, and they uh, screened over by uh, uh, Cham- uh, Chambur here. Uh, this line here, he managed to screen off uh, Belushi's forces effectively, so we kind of kept them out of the battle. And I brought the old guard in, got them engaged pretty much straight away. There's no penalty for using the old guard in these particular rules. There are in other games of uh, this scale. Uh, so we kind of beat up on them a little bit, and we caused a significant number of permanently destroyed units versus those that would come back onto the board. Now, if they came back onto the board, that could pose some problems for the French. Uh, we only played through the end of... February the, I think the 13th, or was it the 12th? Maybe in the, maybe it was a PM of the 13th, I think. So two, two, two days short, or four active turns short of, of playing the whole campaign. So not enough to really dig into it, but I did, uh, I did get tired of the, the variety of fonts, the bad colors, uh, on the counter, the counter artwork is really very 1979, and it's it's pretty freaking bad. Just it's hard to read, and it's annoying. Uh, the setup charts are the usual Zucker version. While they seem to be very well organized, it's difficult to work out who comes on when and keep track of who, who, who's coming and going. You can't read the hex numbers on this map. It's almost impossible to read them. Uh, the color scheme, while the artwork is fantastic, uh, you know, everyone loves Rick Barber and you're not allowed to say anything bad about him, uh, or you're a heathen or a Philistine, uh, but this map is not user-friendly. Uh, it's very difficult to read the hex numbers. Uh, it's hard to discern the differences in the terrain. I like the fact, of course, that it's trying to evoke the, the period of the year and all the rest of it, and I got that, but it just, it, it it's was difficult to engage with and the counters on the map didn't help you know the color scheme here and the fonts and the shiny stuff it was just nasty um the rules as usual it's kind of a dog's breakfast of of a rule book you've got to kind of meander your way through things and double back and cross reference so go get the fresh new rules because they're much much better uh uh, logistics don't really play a part in this game. Uh, I mentioned the, uh, the supply. That's the limited extent of the uh, the negative uh, effects of supply. They're very subtle. So if you do manage to get uh, units that have to roll for initiative by themselves or a commander has to roll for initiative, then yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to make a big difference because you're adding one to the die roll and you're most of the time you're trying to roll... Uh, a four or less or a three or less or even a two or less so if you're adding one that can that can be problematic uh great order battle in this uh far as i can tell i i find the combat system in this game to be archaic uh limited combined arms impact uh limited value of cavalry there they do have this concept of vedettes that i've talked about before which is great if you're two player and with hidden movement otherwise you're you're kind of doing the push me pull you thing um oh look it's a vedette uh they're gonna run away okay great and then you move down the road oh look there's another vedette uh that kind of gets old after a while um good Good history lesson here. That's what this game is for. Good history lesson. It's worth getting if you're into Napoleonics for that. Uh, I I imagine it would probably play very well opposed. It's just not a fun solo experience. And then I get these games out and I get so excited about looking about what what I'm going to do. And then I I get the history, you know, the, the, the history books out and we go through and look at what they did and where they moved to and you can see all the towns and you get all excited and you put the stuff out and you go, ah, oh, this is not working for solo. You, so you just kind of have a little history lesson and that's fine. That's a, That can be part of our experience as gamers. Uh, 
which then really doesn't leave a lot though for replayability. Uh, so this is one I'll probably be putting on the, uh, you know, the uh, off to the home of unloved toys. Uh, we'll be sending this off to let someone else experience it. Pretty brief play time. It plays once you get the hang of the rules. You're rolling for initiative for the commanders, uh, unless they're placed in command by the overall commander. You move your units, you fight your units. Uh, then you have a night phase where you do a reorg and then you you do the supply and you're done. And it, it goes real fast. So, you know, three turns to play a full day, it will take you, you know, 40 minutes or thereabouts. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I think the rules are a little bit of a challenge to, to, to grok, so you're going to need to get the uh, get the, the newer version, uh, which you can find online on BoardGameGeek. <clears throat> Looks like I'm losing my voice again. All right, uh, I had a whole, vi a whole video on Victor Condition, so I'm not going to waste your time uh, recapping that. Suffice to say that they're a little confusing for me. They apparently were easy for others to work out, and I got set straight by everybody, and I appreciate that. Uh, I just found that uh, I had to find a little rule that said that the Russians and the Prussians actually have to get engaged in combat uh, and so they're going to have to suffer some losses before they can exit the map. Uh, and then there's this uh, uh, ratio of forces lost to forces exited that they're not allowed to break. Uh, so it's an unusual game in that the sides are coming on, and in this case off the map, and then trying to exit the map uh, to gain VPs. And it implies that the French also get points for exiting off the map. Uh, so it seemed to me that you could literally uh, come onto the map and then go straight off and be done. Uh, and that was entirely possible until you found the rules that said uh, you had this ratio of uh, lost units to uh, uh, exited units. All right. So this is uh, another Zucker title, Six Days of Glory. This is uh, from the old Clash of Arms guys. There goes the die out of the floor. Nice uh, old school box. See, the, the counters don't look too bad there, do they? Uh, but they, they come out uh, on this stuff all shiny and nasty. Nice box art. Very uh, evocative. Good stuff. All right. I hope you uh, enjoyed the vid. There you go, man.